This is the Big Kahuna, but you know him by another name. <laughs> Hawaii will never be the same. Wow, you guys really want me to talk about this one. Surf's up, and there's a mystery going down. I wasn't sure if I was going to do this movie. Anne was thinking maybe I would cool it on doing solo movie videos for a minute, but I can't even count how many people have asked for this. I'm not much of one for doing requests if I don't already have an idea or motivation for how to go about it, but I know when my hands are tied. Before, we looked at the Loch Ness, Monster of Mexico, and Where's My Mummy movies. Today, we're taking a look at Aloha Scooby-Doo, produced in 2004 and released early 2005, making it the eighth direct video film in the franchise, and the second of the What's New era immediately following Loch Ness. In this video, we're going to be looking at the movie, the classic DVD bonus features like I love to do, and all that fun stuff per usual. One of the biggest things people when requesting this one so heavily want some discussion on in particular is the ending and it being potentially insensitive. Don't get on my ass for that like the people who read the joke title of my Monster Mexico video immediately get mad without watching it and leave an angry comment about how I'm stupid and wrong to be offended and triggered when I'm not and actually spend the whole video hyping that movie up. Are we clear early this time? Because between you and me, I'm tired of having to respond to comments daily on that. I'm not making this video or going into it with the intent to get offended. I actually, as of this intro, have not seen this movie since I was a kid watching it on VHS. And as a kid, I had no problem with the ending because I was like nine. I'm going in as unbiased as possible and I don't get offended for other people or cultures that are not my own, such as this, because it's not my place. I'll probably actually have great things to say about this movie and its representation of the culture. You'll just have to find out. Will I still get into the ending and why people have problems with it, or maybe even the strengths of things when we get there? Yes. But I won't be speaking for myself, and if you are part of that culture and love the parts some people don't, that's valid too. I'm not here to pass judgment on the movie or anyone watching. We are here to have fun and talk about our favorite dog in the whole world. Some of us will love the movie, some of us will be mixed or dislike it. That's okay, we can all have a conversation. Like Jared said on Letterboxd here, the creative risks in this film, the biting analysis of colonialism, the critique of capitalism's devastation on the natural environment. I kinda have to stand. Let's get into it. Let's start off with the history of the piece. The script was written by Temple Matthews, who, for Disney, also wrote The Little Mermaid 2, Return to the Sea, Ursula's crazy sister, Peter Pan, Return to Neverland, the Mickey and Minnie's Gift of the Magi segment from Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas, and even some of the script for 101 Dalmatians 2, Patch's London Adventure. So, a ton of other direct video movies like this one I grew up with, among many other things. In addition to this, he wrote a movie that saw Scooby and the gang attend the Rio Carnival, but that one ultimately never got made. For Aloha, he was given free reign and was sure to put in every idea he could imagine or want to see from Scooby-Doo in this setting. Along with speaking to someone in the area that runs the rest and came from the culture to get to know it better, and finishing in about a month and a half or so after rewrites, with the final product sticking pretty faithfully to his script. Then comes the casting for the film, which is one of the things people often remember the most about this one. Harry Gar stars as Mayor Molly Quinn, who's had a very long and fruitful career, and was no stranger to animation, having voiced Harry's mom Mary McGinnis in Batman Beyond. The lies, the poor grades, the unexplained absences, it's because of these, isn't it? She even previously had appeared in the What's New episode Toy Scary Boo as Sandy Gordon. All it took was the toys going on a rampage and destroying the department store! Starring as Jared Moon is Adam West, who most anyone will recognize. From his iconic titular role in Batman, which Terry Gar also appeared on, to his many, many voice acting performances and animation throughout his later career. Then we have the voices of the most important characters that actually are native to the area in the movie. Ray Bumatai voices Little Jim. And if you're my age, you probably will recognize him as the voice of Tito in Nickelodeon's Rocket Power. Sadly, he passed away only eight months after the film was released after a battle with brain cancer, making this one of his final performances. In Manu, we get another big star in Mario Lopez. I had a huge crush on Manu when I was a kid, so it checks out that the actor behind the character looks like that. Though Mario is Mexican, not Hawaiian, so we've got another Monster Mexico casting thing going on. By the comments way, I'm not offended, I'm just pointing it out. We good? The actor that stands out the most for me, however, is the actress voicing Snooki, Tia Carrera. For one, if you're my age, you're very likely gonna know her as the voice of Nani, Lilo's sister, in Disney's Lilo and Stitch, released three years prior, along with all the sequels. It kinda just makes sense that you would want at least one of the stars of that movie and this one considering they're both animated films from this period and share the setting. But for Scooby-Doo fans, you'll probably recognize her in the franchise for another voice role as well. In Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, she voices the extremely important character Judy Reeves. If you haven't seen the show, I won't spoil why she's important, but she's a pretty major and memorable character, and this movie role is why it was cool to see her pop up again there in a different role. We've been kind for old times' sake but don't push it. The late John Ho, a beloved Hawaiian singer, also performs the opening song of the film. As far as these movies go, this one definitely has a pretty big cast of recognizable stars. Now, let's get into what we're all here for, the story. As the movie starts, we already get the scariest thing you could see right now, the Warner Brothers logo. We open with a look at some Hawaiian greenery, though some of the animation is cut off on the side here since this was originally presented cropped on VHS and DVD, so full consideration wasn't given to the widescreen version as much. Not a nitpick, just something I noticed. The song performed by Don Ho plays, and it perfectly sets the mood for the setting. With the sound of the surf gently breaking 
We get a little CG hummingbird that is cute but didn't age the best along with some dolphins and other creatures, and let's just say, I'm gonna make that one guy that threw several tantrums in the comments about me bringing up early 2000 CG in these movies very angry later during this video, and I'm not sorry. Anyway, this song is great and really gets you in the mood, placing us in the natural setting without the gang's influence to guide us, letting us just take it in. We eventually see a big sign that introduces us to the big kahuna of Hanahuna surfing contest, which is pivotal to the plot as Little Jim walks by. Several surfers are wiped out as we're introduced to Manu. Ah, <sighs> Manu. Little Jim and Manu's girlfriend Snooki cheer him on when another surfer, a mainlander tourist here for the contest, comes a little too close. Manu tells him to chill, but the surfer tells him that he doesn't own the ocean just because he lives here. Which, fair, technically true, uh, I guess, but it does feel good to see Manu totally own him here. Way to go, Manu. That was awesome. You're my big kahuna. Ah, Snooki. You're my big kahuna too. After breaking and drinking from a coconut, Little Jim complains about all the mainlanders joining the contest when it's meant to be a local event, but Manu assures him he's not worried with his ancestors having been riding the waves for generations. Little Jim tears into a pineapple, still not happy about it, saying the island spirits won't like it. Some of the mainlanders come over to make fun of them for trying to scare them, and Manu is not happy, walking off. Interrupting the calm, Mount Pulanana starts making noise and emitting smoke, and through the trees we see small creatures run out. Following them in the shadows is something even bigger as they all appear, chasing people into the water and attacking those who stay. Little Jim notices Snooki, who's attacked by the creatures and dragged away while he's too covered in them to be able to go after her. Even after he tries to break free, they just trip him and get away with her. By the time Manu gets back, Little Jim has to break the news to him, revealing the Tiki spirits came and fulfilled the curse of the Wiki Tiki. A little over seven minutes into the movie, we finally see Fred, Shaggy, and Scooby enter the frame ready to hang glide. With Fred assuring them he read at least some of the instructions, the terrified duo take off after him and eventually seem to get the hang of it. Just one problem, how to land was one of the things Fred didn't read. On their own, Velma and Daphne are taking photos of the wildlife and scenery, explaining they're here because the Goha Aloha company brought Daphne here to design clothes. Offer an all-expense paid trip, though not sure why they paid for her friends. I think these geckos are going to look super on my new swimwear line. Huh? She reveals all the pictures can be silkscreened directly onto her swimwear designs in hopes Jared Moon from the company likes the idea, just in time for Fred to gracefully land near them, and for the other two to crash down. But immediately they see all of the tourists heading out of exactly where the gang is headed, boarding them of the evil Tiki spirits. Somehow it seems the gang just can't catch a break and have a normal vacation. The two chickens are talked into going anyway with the promise of food, some of which they get to see as soon as they make their way there. They're pounding taro into a unique Hawaiian food called poi. It was a staple in the diet of ancient Hawaiians. It's not quite strong enough for them though, so they bring out the reliable hot sauce. The women making it reveal they're making it as an offering, but realizing they said too much, close up. Daphne decides they should talk to Jared Moon, the guy who brought her here, to find out if he knows anything. Meanwhile, he's weirdly selling his own wiki tiki charms to people promising they'll help ward off the spirits from attacking. Fred is impressed by the van though. Velma finds it odd he's working out of it considering his business, but he assures them it's just a side gig. He tells them to get out while they can, explaining the wiki tiki dwells inside Mount Pulanana, requiring a human sacrifice. Manu and Little Jim come up, confirming this. But as Fred recognizes Manu, they reveal what happened to his girlfriend. Are you sure she was kidnapped? Snooki's no rocket scientist, but she definitely knows her way around the island. Before they can get into too many gruesome details, they're interrupted by mere Molly Quinn, assuring them it's safe. Why, you're more likely to get struck by lightning than become some silly sacrifice. Oh! Little Jim confronts her, saying she should ban mainlanders from the contest, which would appease the spirits. But she still won't back down, even with Snooki's disappearance. Manu angrily storms off, followed by Little Jim after he reiterates the importance of not angering the spirits further. Tira tells them everyone has good reason to be terrified. And who wouldn't be terrified of the horrible Wiki Tiki? But the mayor tries to keep them excited for the festivities later sponsored by local realtors, full of food and entertainment. Like you just said the magic words? Well, gang, it looks like we've got another mystery on our hands. And this time, it's Tiki style. Once they arrive, they're greeted by Ruben Lalaluna, voiced by Tom Kenny, who's sponsoring the event, and is very excited to talk about fantastic real estate opportunities. Of course. Of course. Before Shaggy and Scooby can dive into the Mount Pulanana ice cream replica, Ruben stops them for the limbo. Shaggy tiptoes his way through, and Scooby jicks his way into being declared the winner. Smile now. People love politicians who love doggies. <laughs> Fred notices someone singing, and Manu explains he's begging the Wiki Tiki to spare Snooki. Velma asks if anyone has actually seen the spirit, and he and Little Jim say you don't have to see him to know he's angry. Though she still asks, angry at whom? Little Jim says it's clearly the mainlander surfing the waves, and perhaps even people like Ruben exploiting the area for personal gain. Manu tells them this isn't the first time the Wiki Tiki woke up, going into when colonizers invaded and upset the spirits, the Wiki Tiki rising up as Mount Pulanana erupted. Velma feels like colonizers invading at a surfing contest are different levels of things to worry about, calling the Wiki Tiki hashtag woke and hashtag 
hashtag sensitive. Hey, that's what my comment section calls me. Anyway, Ruben begins his presentation, offering anyone to have their own piece of paradise here if they buy into the Coconut Beach condominium. And immediately, Mount Gulanana starts making noise again. Ruben tries to tell everyone not to panic, but Velma calls him out on his bullshit. The mayor stands by him, though, insisting the volcano is dormant, just like the brochures say. Of course, just in time for it to shake the ground again. Suddenly, all the tiny wiki tickies come flying down to attack again, and the mayor tries to get a guy to stop recording so the media doesn't find out. The little spirits start setting everything on fire and even start chasing the gang around. Shaggy and Scooby make the very important stop to eat the volcanic ice cream, though. They get chased through the food after, and Fred realizes he's being chased on hot coals, which don't affect the spirits. They abduct Daphne just like Snooky, though, and Fred isn't about to let that happen. But she quickly grabs the stick and frees herself on her own, using it to set a fire that wards them off. The mayor tries to stay calm, and if you look up here, you can see where they forgot to remove these notes from the animation and it holds on screen for a few seconds. Again, by the comments way, just pointing it out. Anyway, Ruben is torn up because real estate value is ruined now. Daphne notices one of the spirits drops something, which Manu recognizes as Snooky's necklace, confirming they have her. Thelma is still confused as to why the Wokey Tiki cares about a surfing contest, unsure if any spiritual things really going on. Fred decides to get the spirit to target them by joining the contest, though Velma points out he can't surf. Luckily, someone else does know how. I'm a surfer, but apparently it's notable that Daphne is a goofy-footed surfer, as in with her left foot at the back of the board. They keep an eye out for the spirit, but everything seems all clear. Until Shaggy and Scooby mistake some pigs for it and get out. And while there, take a ride on the waves. Oh man! <laughs> like you're hanging 20! The others decide to give up, but unfortunately the boys hear some more growling, and this time it's the real thing. Thelma and Fred speed over while we get a full-on ocean chase. The boys wash up next to the pig, and the chase continues as they find a faster way to flee. But he's too good, so the others finally intervene. Wiki Tiki is finally thrown off his board and gets knocked out, but the gang can't find him after. Daphne notes that there's something familiar about him, but there's nothing they can do here, so they take their new piggy bestie back to the hotel. There, the welcome surfer sign is changed to anyone, and on the door they find a note that says, Be gone. Be goni. Huh. Must be some kind of weird Hawaiian word. I wonder what it means. I see this is yet another language Fred has yet to master. Thelma deduces the message must clearly be from the Wiki Tiki, though they aren't sure if it's a warning or a threat. Mayor Quinn pops up, but things are too bad for her to keep pretending like it's fine. Worried she'll have to go back to selling shoes if this isn't taken care of. Well, at least it's not all bad. That's the spirit. Manu suggests the gang go visit Auntie Mahina, a medicine woman who might know more about the spirit. All it takes to convince the boys to join them on the search for her is the promise of some food, of course. With Manu as their guide the next morning, Fred drives them up in his new rental with some very interesting colors. Thelma starts hypothesizing about suspects, with Fred pointing out Jared Moon benefiting off the charms. And Velma points out Ruben could benefit by scaring everyone away and buying up the properties cheap after people sell to get out. They have to go off-road to continue, driving through the bumpy jungle until they can't go any farther. I want him. I want him bad. I can't be here. You're not gonna get lost as long as I'm around. Now why would you say that? That's exactly what not to say right now. Of course, he says he hears the Wiki Tiki and tells them to run, and instead of joining them, stays back to go after it and find Snooky. They try to go after him, but hear him scream and a growl, only finding evidence of a fight, his broken knife, and some clothing scraps. Now they're lost in the jungle and no way to find Auntie Mahina, though Daphne has an idea. By seeing which way the wind is blowing her hair, she's able to determine where North is and lead them the right way. They find a rickety bridge they have to cross, so of course... Heads, you go first. Tails, we go second. Heads it is, you go first. I suppose it would be useless to point out your lapse in logic, so I'll just go. Shaggy kicks Scooby over, bouncing him across as he tries to follow. And miraculously, they survive the way. Daphne gracefully walks across until she falls through, but she gets resourceful again, using some floss in her purse as a rope to swing over. Though I'm not sure it would really be strong enough for that. Scooby catches a whiff of the promised food and leads them directly to who they're searching for, though she's passed out. Man, that's one loud snore. That's one loud moo moo. She wakes up and they ask her about the spirit, which immediately stresses her out. Fred explains why they're here and that Manu and Snooky were taken so she decides to consult the bones and invites them in. She says the Wiki Tiki is angry, which confuses Velma again because she doesn't understand why he's so hashtag triggered over a surfing contest. Auntie Mihina gets really mad at this, explaining the big kahuna of Hanahuna must be of Hawaiian blood, and Velma can't argue that surfing originated from here. Auntie Mihina tells them the Wiki Tiki believes the mainlanders are here to destroy the island, wanting vengeance, and will sacrifice Manu and Snooki if they don't save them. She tells them what to look for and gives them something to ward off the spirits. The boys ask about the pie they smelled before they go, but unfortunately she already ate it all. She then shows them the road, making Velma wonder why they had to come the way Manu took them if it was there all along. Back in town, Ruben tries to get people to stop leaving with no success. The mayor, meanwhile, is making a statement about the contest still happening, along with passing out buttons for her campaign. Little Jim runs over looking for Manu, and they have to break the news. He immediately goes to confront Mayor Quinn, telling her she has to ban mainlanders from the contest, saying she's responsible for Manu and Snooki's disappearance and whatever happens tomorrow, clearing out the remainder of those watching. The gang assures 
assure the mayor they're on the case, realizing there's no time to lose. They go searching for the Wiki Tiki Lair's recommended, with Fred wondering if it's behind the waterfall. Inside the cave, they find nothing, until Daphne trips, triggers a hidden door, and falls back. Inside, they find tunnels, and even a skeleton dressed exactly like Gilligan from Gilligan's Island, as well as some bats. They can't even see us! Haven't you ever heard that expression, blind as a bat? Actually... Most bats see well, but depend on echolocation to navigate in the dark. As quiet as they try to be, Scooby sneezes and the bats fly everywhere. Say it with me, grown adults. Early 2000s CG. After it calms down, Gwen stays to give Shaggy a little kiss. They start to question why the Wiki Tiki would take locals instead of mainlanders if he's really angry about the contest, and who his targets are, what his motives are. You can see a little white on the edge of the background art here since, again, this much being seen wasn't originally considered much. Just a little funny animation thing to point out, please don't leave angry comments again. Fred almost falls, and we see just how dangerous being in here is. And worse, everything in the cave rumbles and their path back is cut off. Deeper in, Daphne is impressed by the carved stairs, which Thelma isn't surprised by since she's heard people may have arrived here as early as 700 AD. Thelma dropping a little History Channel vibes. They start hearing snarling from both directions and the tiny spirits come out. The uh, guy who hates it when I talk about early 2000s CG? Cover your ears right now, babe. Trigger warning for you in particular. Okay, it's safe. The CG on these guys looks very poorly aged in this scene, and it bugs me. The cell shading on them doesn't blend very well with the hand-drawn characters or backgrounds, and their movement is too smooth to look natural with the human characters. And I know what you're thinking. Spoilers, they get revealed to be tiny robots, so the CG works on them for you anyway. And that's fine. For me personally, it takes me out of the movie whenever I see them. I know it's out of necessity with how many there are being too much for hand-drawn animation, but that doesn't make it less aged looking today. Okay, guy who had to mute the video it's safe, welcome back. The gang finally managed to hide from the CGTGs and make their way deeper in search of the sacrificial altar. Eventually they find Snooky, who screams and runs away. They assume she must be terrified and follow after her, but the Wiki Tiki jumps out. Fred takes out the protection given by Auntie Mahina, but it doesn't work as he breathes volcanic fire at them. Hoping to keep him distracted, they send Scooby and Shaggy out to perform. We'll be smooching and coochin' in Hawaii. Not smooching and cooching? Keep that coochie covered up, sir! It doesn't work for long, so the chase begins. The others push some rocks down, leading him to fall off, but the damage from the chaos gives him an easy way back. They run into another cave and find Snooky, and she leads the way as the Wiki Tiki catches up. Daphne trips him with Scooby's tail, but everything starts crumbling and they all barely make it through in time. Snooky tells them the spirit still has Manu, and they follow her deeper until the Wiki Tiki appears and grabs her. Despite using their protection, he still takes her back again. Unfortunately, they realize they were led to a snake pit, which they have to get past if they want out. Shaggy plays some relaxing music to keep them at bay. And he accidentally grabs one as he climbs up. In their hurry, the boys end up running into the others and push them off into the water, where they all slide down different paths until reuniting. Back on land, Fred triggers a hidden door which reveals the little spirits, and inside they discover all kinds of machinery, including the controllers for the little spirit robots. Velma is impressed by how sophisticated they are, and Fred realizes how the water has been causing steam to come out of Mount Pulanana to look like smoke, being used as a signal. Velma also deduces the Wiki Tiki can't be ancient since he serves using a board from Goha Aloha, which she confirms is his. Daphne suspects he won't be able to resist making an appearance of the contest today, so they find a way out to start their plan. Mayor Quinn welcomes everyone, though the wind today is strong, and the smoke of the mountain isn't scaring any mainlanders to the anger of Little Jim. Daphne makes her way out as planned, and of course the Wiki Tiki is lured into the open, wiping out the mainlander who Little Jim helps despite their differences. The rest of the gang, already in position, jumps into action with Shaggy and Scooby ending up in a tight chase that ends with the spirit finally being wiped out. Now comes the moment everyone's been waiting for. Who is the Wiki Tiki? It's that color-clashing Auntie Mahina. I'm not sure that makes a criminal, babe. All very educated guests. Thelma, pointing out his amazing surfing skills, unmasks Manu as the spirit. Snooky runs out from the crowd to hug him as Velma explains how he faked his own abduction. The real estate scam wasn't Reuben, but Manu and also Snooky, using the legend to scare off the locals and buy their homes cheap. All recent sales on properties were attributed to Snooky's real name, who's also a rocket scientist and controlled the robots. Snooky's no rocket scientist! All of this much to the disappointment of their friend Little Jim. Manu apologizes, explaining he needed the money, the two of them hoping to take in the money and live the easy life, surfing into their old age. And our plan would've worked too if it weren't for you meddling mainlanders. Though they're arrested, Manu is still satisfied being the Big Kahuna, though Mayor Quinn steps in to award the Big Kahuna to Scooby-Doo instead of him, and he's taken off having lost to a dog. This is basically where I found people seem to take issue with the ending. Let's reiterate, not me, I'm just the messenger. Manu and Snooky doing this for the money is disrespectful to their home, their people, and their culture, something people from here would never consider doing, especially the parts that caused harm. Obviously, that's what makes them the bad guys here, even betraying their friend, and it's not like people in real life don't get desperate too, obviously. From what I gather, leave me out of this one getting angry in the comments. I see you people in the Monster of Mexico video. See, what I believe happened here is Temple Matthews, no shade to him, much love, didn't want to fall into the obvious writing traps. In his interview on JB and Millie's channel, go check that out after this, he explains that doing the ending where it's the realtor or something like that has been done to 
to death and everyone's tired of it, so it had to be something people wouldn't see coming so clearly. I think if he had to go with Manu being the Wiki Tiki, this problem could have been solved without having as many people feel uncomfortable with it. Have Manu be the Wiki Tiki, but tie it into what Little Jim's so upset about. What the Wiki Tiki was so upset about. He brings the legend to life to get disrespectful mainlanders to leave and allow the contest to proceed like tradition. I know that's still so obvious too, but I don't think it's a big enough change to harm the movie, and would potentially appease people that do take issue with the choice. This way, Manu isn't attacking his own people and destroying the area just for some money. It's kind of a lazy choice for it to all be for money anyway. That's what all Scooby villains do. Just make it be a noble choice to have the legend come out. I can see why many people are disappointed with this kind of framing on them when the rest of the movie has a strong anti-colonialism and anti-capitalism message that's great for younger audiences watching, full of pretty great representation of the people in their island for the audience as far as a Scooby-Doo movie goes, only to fall into that at the very end. Honestly, Manu is so hot, so he should get away with it anyway. He's exempt. Hashtag justice for Manu. What do you think of the ending? Do you think it's fine or great even? And if you don't like it, what would you do differently? Let's not leave a comment about that yet though, there's plenty of video left. Speaking of, back to the movie, Scooby with his prize also gets a year supply of macadamia nuts, and Mayor Quinn even gives the whole gang a button to thank them. That night at the luau, everyone finally gets to relax, and Ruben reveals all the property Manu and Snooki bought will be returned. Meanwhile, Jared reveals to Daphne that the company loves her design she came here for and will be using them, and gives her a complimentary charm. The real ancient spirits of Hawaii are in your debt. Uh, thanks, Auntie. But it was nothing. We were just doing what we do best. That would be meddling. <laughs> <laughs> the mini tiki show up one more time for a dance, and yes, I still think the CG takes me out of the moment even if they're robots. The way their feet just slide over the ground without making any imprint or dust makes it look really fake, and not in the way that they're just robots fake way. Anyway, it was Scooby controlling them as a prank, and they all laugh. Scooby dooby doo! <laughs> Aloha! As the credits roll, we get one more song over them, this time performed by Tia Carrera herself. You wanna come back? When the wiki tiki calls, you wanna come back? To the island waterfalls, you wanna come back? When the island calls, hello, Scooby Doo. It's a nice little original song to play the movie out. Mahalo no ka oi Scooby Doo. Okay, like I said, I hadn't seen this one since I was a kid, so what do I think now? I actually really liked it. I was hesitant to revisit it, that I may dislike it or have nothing to say after setting the video up this far prior, but I think this one is a pretty solid entry in the what's new era of films. The villain twist may leave a bit to be desired for some, but otherwise, the script by Temple Matthews holds up, I think. The animation, beyond some simple mistakes that aren't anything big at all, holds up. The music is good, the stellar cast is great, the CG IMO didn't age great but doesn't ruin the movie at all, even for me. I think this is a perfectly fine Scooby-Doo movie. Okay, if you've seen the other movie videos, you know what time it is. Let's take a look at those classic bonus features. For a very rare occasion, we actually get a mini making a featurette titled The Wiki Tiki Tale of Aloha Scooby Doo. We actually get to see director Tim Maltby and most of the voice actors talk about the film. Get your Wiki Tiki charms now! You know what Wiki means, don't you? Well, actually, it, it would translate as a, as a quick tiki. What is this more, like behind the scenes DVD? Well, I think voice actors find it very easy to, to get into a, a part and get right into it. It's time to skedaddle, Scoob! It's the Wiki Tiki! It's not physical. You really just have to do it with your voice. Say cheese! Say cheese! Say cheese! And there's a challenge in that, but there's also a tremendous freedom that sometimes you don't get to have on camera. Hey, what are you doing? The sense of running. 549. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? You don't have to feel stupid, because no one's going to see that it's you. You with the video camera. Turn that off. I can't have the media getting wind of this. People might say, maybe that's Terry Gar, but no, she would never be that crazy. When I got the part of Velma, my sister and I jumped up and down. What do you mean? Because we grew up with Scooby-Doo. It's a little light, but it's more than we get most of the time, and these days we don't even get anything. Next up, in another National Geographic featurette, we get Hula Hullabalula. Like the one for Mummy, Shaggy and Scooby are done with more cheap, quick puppet animation, but it's a bonus short, so it's fine. Of course, they call up Kid Y again to get some help while stranded on an island. He makes his way over using a hologram and explains this is just one of over 100 islands that make up Hawaii across 1,500 miles. Then he gives us a very cartoony interpretation of colonization. While the boys are afraid of volcanoes, Kid assures them the only active ones are the ones on the big island going into their history. Caused by more and rock belching up to the sea floor. I usually take a little antacid when that happens. 
Kate even reveals you can surf and ski on the same day on the biggest one. Kid then goes into a brief history of the Polynesian people and their heritage, including of course the hula. It's in the title, you know. Kid then goes into the history of surfing for the boys. Hey, the only surfing I do is with the browser. Me too, bud. Kid explains the Polynesians got here with their canoes they made, so the boys start work on their own to escape. Unfortunately, Kid has to get back to his mom, but the boys should be good now. The two then travel all over in circles. Finally, we get to the biggest feature, which is a full short, an evening with the Scooby Gang. The gang is being interviewed in front of a live studio audience, which Velma takes her glasses off for, followed by Shaggy crushing them. In your own words, share your thoughts on... Believe it or not, he's a great dancer. I thought it was pudding. It wasn't. Just plain weird. Hey, cool suit. Scooby, the great Yogi Bear once said of you, one of the coolest cats I know. That's well. <laughs> <laughs> Shaggy reveals he and Scooby's secret to staying fit is all the running and makes sure to promote their new exercise video. I was just interviewed for an article I'd like to promote if I could. Please do. Well, it's called Beauty Tips for the Girl on the Go. It's got everything you need from hair tips while getting chased by a giant alligator creature to skin care during a dust storm caused by a demented mummy. Thelma reveals she herself is working on a book. The working title is... Practical application of interstitial phenomena related to forensic science. Anyway. Hey, I've got one too. Really? Uh, no. But I can bench press 220. I love you, Himbo Fred. The interview asks about Fred's plans, and he does a full demonstration of how he does his traps, and of course, catches himself. You know, there really is a sixth member of the Scooby gang. Fred, I thought we weren't supposed to talk about Scrappy. No, I'm talking about the mystery machine. Yep. That's my style and ride. <laughs> you seem quite attached to that band, Fred. Sorry, I can't focus. Blood's rushing to my head. Daphne cuts the delirious Fred down with her nail file, and they continue, such as what to do when investigating a mystery. Unmask the monster. The monster. Why is it always a monster? Don't you think that's unfair monster profiling? Hmm, this sounds suspicious. What's that zipper on his neck? Come on, let's find out. No, uh, keep your seats. <laughs> if it weren't for those meddling kids, I would have gotten that interview and dinner. And that's it for the video extras. I wish there were more fun shorts like that one. And with that, let's keep this video a little more simple and sweet than usual. We came, we saw, we ate a truckload of Scooby Snacks. Like I said, a lot of you guys really wanted me to do this one, so hopefully it wasn't too much of a letdown now that it's here and over. I was worried and procrastinated a lot because of that, but I think it came out pretty okay. Again, if you want to talk about that ending twist amongst yourselves, let's have that conversation. And beyond the ending, what do you think of this particular DTV movie? I think I actually liked it more now than when I was a kid. Do you think it's up to par? And how do you feel it represented the beautiful culture of the setting? Speaking of, while a vacation to Hawaii seems like a dream in this movie once the mystery is over, Cross off any plans you have to actually do that. The people there are begging everyone to stop going there for vacation right now because it's hurting the land. Please listen to that genuine request and watch Lilo and Stitch or this movie instead for now. If you want to know more about the situation, it's easy to look into everything going on right now. If you love the people and their culture there, plan your vacation for somewhere else this next time. Okay, in the next video, I'll be doing another one I wasn't originally planning on, but so many of you have asked for that I have no choice. Following up the very first video in this series about the only Scooby-Doo creature that ever gave me nightmares, we're going to dive into the one that apparently gave most of you nightmares nightmares. Like, a lot of you, apparently. This episode has come up a lot. We're gonna keep that one short and sweet, too. Just focus on the one episode. No idea on a release estimate. These are done when they're done. Anyway, like the video, subscribe if you haven't and want to see that next video. Follow on socials if you're into that. That's the end of this video. Aloha!